Hello to all the meeps and bubbles. There, there it is. Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Let's Play. My name is Luma and here we are back on Resistor. Take a look at Turner. I have no clue what he's about to do, but he looks funny. Before we start with today's project, let's take care of the steam turbines, which are overheating because they're at 99 or 100 degrees. Not every single one of them, but a couple. In order to achieve that, I will use the cooling loop from the working area from the duplicants, expand it upwards, cool the steam turbines, and in the same step, cool down the material that is on the conveyor rail. Therefore, we can place down some conveyor rails on top of the steam turbines, expand the cooling loop upwards, place down some radiant tiles, made out of steel and then prepare to finish the piping with a lot of bridges. I think I'm making them out of granite. Later on water will be dropped on top of the steam turbines. Now the insulation pipes made out of ceramic can be hooked up. Also we can add in the tiles between the bridges. I did build them out of granite. Meanwhile Joshua is very stressed so he's getting a massage. But I think I have a long term solution for that. I hope. What I mean is increasing his morale by placing down another recreation room with one of the arcade cabinets. Nice, the dupes finished what I ordered them to build. So now to the nitty gritty parts, first place down a couple of bottle empties somewhere around there. Drop down a little bit of water on top of the steam turbines, therefore we have to deconstruct I guess around 3 ladder tiles. Then we can connect up the pipe pieces, then we can connect this up, cancel this order again, connect this up. And then we need to rearrange the pipes here. Let us first reroute the loop. Therefore I will need a bridge, place it right here in this orientation and cut one tile. Hopefully this does the trick and then this pipe will be empty and we can deconstruct it. Then we can rearrange the pipe pieces around the aqua tuna. The dupes have deconstructed this tile but not constructed the bridge. Right now they did and the loop is flowing again. Nice. We don't have enough liquid for the loop to be filled as you can see down here but that's fine for now I guess. Now we can deconstruct this long pipe and I want to change the priority on our Aquatuna setup. In order to achieve that we just have to deconstruct this tile and place down another bridge right here. What this does is this line now is the priority line because the second line from the input and the overflow will get bridged onto an already existing line. The line that is already existing as you have seen in my shorts is the priority line. Nice. Now that this is done and flown, we can go to the conveyor rails. We just have to hook them up here and here and then deconstruct one tile there and there. They probably will drop down something, but I don't care at the moment. What you can see me do right here is get the remaining material out of the conveyor line by placing down a conveyor bridge. After that we can place down the bottle emptiers in the free spots. The dupes finished building the bottle emptiers, so we can set them to liquid, water, enable auto bottling, high priority, copy the settings over and wait for them to drop a little bit of water. The drop down water will increase the heat transfer between the pipes and the steam turbines and even if it's just 1 kilogram to the left and 15 in the middle that should be enough. Then it is time to check the heat, at the moment we are at 52 degrees at the steam turbines so we can compare that to a later state. Also the conveyor rail is still filled, what is wrong with that? Oh right. I have to place down another conveyor bridge at the end like that. That should be fine and that should do the trick. The care package that was waiting for us delivered some briar seeds. These could be useful for some decor plants. <laughs> Man, Joshua really is in pain. Major eye irritation, hungry, hypothermia and holding breath. Well, this is supposed to be kind of a mess, this place. Take a look at the gas overlay. In order to reduce Joshua's stress a little bit, we place down a recreation room. The recreation room at the moment has an arcade cabinet that gives us plus two morale. Hopefully that helps a little bit. As for our dupes on the main planetoid, I think it is about time that we finally fill the bathroom loop. <laughs> I put that off way too long. <laughs> to fill up the pipes I could use water from our infinite storage and use one of those long pipes right here. But I guess right now we don't have any water, just five kilogram because I put it all in our oxygen machine. You can see 1200 kilograms per tile. So I'm just going to use the water from the steam geyser, which is at a nice 23.9 degrees. Use its pipe and hook it up to one of the pipes that leads upwards. Probably the middle one. No, the left one. Just have to bridge it onto that and bridge it onto that pipe. Like this. There we go. The duplicants finished this. Now we can set our sensor to below 500 kilograms, suck up the rest of the water and then wait for the bathroom loop to be filled. 
If it is not enough with the first batch of water, send over another one. What you could see right here was our overflow kicking in, the water that we don't need or the excess water that is being produced by the bathroom being sent down. It will be sent down this line to the right into the cleaning room and then be dropped down right here germ free or with a little bit of germs right in it. Don't know why that happened at the moment. Maybe a dupe made something dumb. Yeah, that is polluted water right there. They probably peed in it. Those dupes. Now that the bathroom loop is filled and we have time before the polluted water backs up, we could make the filtration room a chlorine room too. In order to achieve that, I have to duplicate deliver some liquids. First crude oil, then naphtha, so we can create a stacked liquid lock. We already have exactly 1000 grams of it lying there. Wow, now we can stop it and deliver some naphtha. After one hell of a ride, Harold finally delivered the naphtha and we have 138 kilograms of that. Here they dropped 5 kilograms of it. Let's drop a little bit more. Sorry, I'm still following Harold. Stop that. 7 kilograms. 19, that's enough. And now we can sweep up this tile. What I have done here is place down a gas pump, connect it up to a gas outlet, a high pressure gas vent, so the oxygen that is in here will get sucked up, thrown out, and we can replace that with a high pressure chlorine, so every polluted dirt that will drop down cannot off gas. Therefore, the pressure of the chlorine that we will put in has to be higher than 1.8 kilograms per tile. While the filtration room is being vacuumed out, we can top up this pipe again. So that our cooling loop is full and doesn't have these air pockets in between. Therefore we have to wait for the duplicates to build that bridge. Thanks dupes. Wait a little bit. And then we can deconstruct the bridge again. There we go. If we take a look at the temperatures here in the industrial sauna, industrial brick or however you want to call it, you can see that the steam turbines did not change any temperature. It is still at 56, 58 degrees Celsius, but we heated up the working area for the duplicates. So the power of our aqua tuner is not enough to cool down all the steam turbines as well as our machinery. So we probably have to place down a second one next to the first one, which is kind of annoying because I have the piping right here. So let me think of something. Okay, I think I just go with this. Place down an aqua tuner as well as a pipe sensor. Place down a pipe this way. Upwards, bridge it downwards. This should be the priority pipe if we deconstruct that piece. I don't want the liquid to go down there. Therefore, I'm going to place a granite tile right here. Duplicates should still be able to go there. Then let them build this and let's see how this goes. Also for the cabling, let's just go right through this wall. Okay, the dupes built most of it. Now we can place down the automation wire made out of, uh, oh, steel, nice. So now we got that pipe and this is ready. Now we can deconstruct that and hope that the liquid won't drop down here because that would create a mess. After that has been done, we can place down the bridge for the inlet. By the way, why is the symbol so tiny? Nice, the thing with the oil did function. The oil dropped on top of it and not down here. That's what we wanted. And now we can deconstruct the tile again, I guess. But first we have to place down the piping for the inlet. So if this is overfilled, bridge it over onto the priority pipe exactly like this. And then we can deconstruct that. Set this to high priority and wait for the beginnings again. Now we have to set the correct temperature for our sensor. We want it the same as here, 18 degrees, copy the settings over. And since this gets checked twice, we don't have to worry about anything. Let's see if in a couple of cycles the cooling power is enough to handle the heat now. Because this is getting too hot, down here especially. Wait, I forgot something. Take a look at this. I forgot the filter gate, so we are wasting power if we are not using that. Now let's place down the filter gate made out of steel because steel is not a material that we have most of. Nice. Now let's set this to the same value. Five seconds. No, this can be two seconds or one second, I guess. Copy the settings over and done. Here on Uzista, the dupes are still stressed. So let's give them another recreation room. But this time 
I'm using the mechanical surfboard. Let's place down two of those, hook them up to the water, deconstruct the tiles underneath because they will spill some water and replace the tiles with mesh tiles. For the next step we just have to hook it up to the power grid. Our power grid on this planetoid is kind of a mess so we need a transformer for that. Make the duplicates build that really fast and deconstruct all the power cables that we don't need anymore. And a big cable for the transformer. The dupes are finished building the cables. Now we have power here and silk power at our liquid pump. Now we just have to make this a recreation room again. Maybe we have a plant left over anyway. Was it tasty, Pluckslug? Did you enjoy my cobalt ore? There we go, Turner. Now the seed. And now we should have a second recreation room here. Very nice. This gives plus two morale. Exactly. And uh, this also gives plus two morale. But the arcade cabinet lasts for a couple of cycles. So the bonus can stack. We got even more printables, fried mushrooms for now. Alright, I almost forgot about that. We can deconstruct the gas pump now here and fill this room with chlorine. So let's take another high pressure valve, place it down. Yeah, probably just right there. Grab one of these pipes. And we need an empty pipe. We don't have an empty pipe here. This right one could be used. Yeah, we could use this to transport a little bit of the chlorine upwards. But first we have to get rid of the hydrogen. What can we do with the hydrogen? We can just send it back probably. Okay, let's place down another row of pipes. This one will be the downwards pipe for everything that we have left over. Like this. Grab one of the bridges. And now we just have to connect it up somewhere, probably right here. Deconstruct this, grab the pipe and connect it up like this. You can deconstruct this one or not. You can just let it at this. Yeah, like this. We can also replace the high pressure gas vent with a regular gas vent because otherwise our duplicates ears will pop every time they walk in there and there's no atmosphere dock. So let's just go with this. This should stop at two kilograms, which still is enough for polluted stuff to not off gas. The pipes have been finished, so we can send down all the hydrogen. But first we have to hook up the right pipe to our sorting system, which is this pipe that stops right here and then sorts the stuff into our different finite storages, as you can see here. Now that that has been taken care of, we can connect those up and hope everything works, otherwise we have hydrogen in here. And now we can deconstruct that bridge. In order to deliver some chlorine, we are going to use the infinite storage right here. The infinite storage has been activated by the switch and the gas will be transported via the pipe that I built right here upwards onto the second most pipe to the right, all the way up to our pyramid then it makes this funny loop and gets thrown in to our room. The chlorine is now being delivered. We can take a look at the room. Still a vacuum. And now it is filled with chlorine. Now we just have to wait for it to be maximum pressure. Then we can deactivate it and send the rest of the chlorine back. We can do that by just placing another bridge right here again. After deconstructing the connection down there and deactivating the infinite storage, of course. We are now at around 2 kilograms or a little bit above it and the chlorine is very cold but because of the tiny mass it has it probably will warm up pretty soon. So now we can deconstruct the gas vent, place down another bridge so that the chlorine will get sent down again. We have to deactivate the infinite storage otherwise it will still send up more chlorine. The chlorine that is sent up will get bridged back again onto our main sorting line. That is fine. This will take a while, but it should sort itself out. I placed on the water sieve again and Ruby delivered some sand. So the water sieve is working, the polluted water is being cleaned up and the clean water is being sent over back into the bathroom. Nice. Bathroom loop is finished now, let's hope nothing freezes. And to show you why I made a fuss with the 2 kilograms per tile, as you can see the polluted dirt that I have my mouse hovering over right now is not emitting its uh, polluted oxygen because of the overpressure. Overpressure being more than 1.8 kilogram for the polluted stuff. So with our 2.25 kilogram we are fine. 
back at our industrial brick you can see that the working area is cooled down again and the steam turbines dropped around 8 degrees celsius. That's not the final temperature that we wanted to achieve but it's better now. Let's check that again later on. And while we are here we can reroute the thermoregulator cooling loop that has the function of cooling down our food storage. That's why I placed another thermoregulator in our steam room because everything that creates heat should be in the steam room. Right now I'm placing down a couple of bridges to make the output of the thermoregulator the main priority pipe. I actually did forget to hook this up to the power grid, so now should be a good time to change that. We can change out the wires for heavy watt wires inside of the steam room and then place the transformers inside of the steam room so the heat from the transformers can get used. That also allows us to deconstruct all the unnecessary old lines. Everything has been built now, now we can take a look at the thermoregulator. The thermoregulator should be set to the same temperature that we have down here, so we can just copy that, minus 30 degrees. And then we can hook up the pipes. Yeah, I did not want that to happen. Now we overfilled the loop. There's no movement left. But we can deconstruct those here. And this long pipe right here. Now that the loop is closed, filled with hydrogen and not flowing, all that is left to do is extract some pipe contents to reduce the amount of hydrogen in the pipes to get the hydrogen rotating again. Gosman is letting a little bit of the hydrogen out right here and we do that so long until it rotates quickly. Okay, I think that's enough. Cancel it now. And now the loop is going. No, it stops here. Okay, we need to remove a little bit more. Extract pipe contents. That's because I already activated this. Let's deactivate it by setting it to below minus 30 so it won't cool at this exact moment in time. Come on dupes, this is important. This is our food. So now let's stop again, see if this goes. Yep, we got one tile too much, but it doesn't matter. Now we can reset this to above minus 30. The transformers have been built, so we can deconstruct the transformers down here. The cable is still needed for that transformer, but that transformer is just there for, okay, all of the atmosphere docks and the stuff that we don't need anymore. If we can get power to the atmosphere docks in another way, then with this transformer, we can deconstruct the transformer, get the iron back and deconstruct the heavy watt wire all the way to here. Well, okay then, I'm just going to place a power transformer inside of our steam room, connect it up to the cables, use one of the conductive wires and hook it up to the atmosphere docks. Okay, that wasn't so smart because of the priorities. They cut the cable before they constructed the new one. Well, should have thought of that. Maybe the dupes that can come from our pyramid can fix this. There we go. The power is up again and all of our atmosphere docks are running. Nice. Welcome to all the meeps and bubbles. There. There it is. What is printing? We have a, we have a researcher meep. That is new. Also, critter version and narcoleptic. <laughs> nope. See, it is. Okay. Game. What is wrong with your colors? Okay. At the moment you can see me stocking up the rocket. That's because I want to send Rowan up in the sky again, so he can research everything that is left. Ellie's bringing over, I guess, the last of the plastic. No, two more, three more deliveries. I set it to 20 tons, so they almost put in everything that we have. <laughs> but I think this is enough now. So let's take a look at our interior. Frankie is still delivering. Come on, Frankie, go away. Thank you, Frankie. Now we have 20 tons of plastic in there. That should be enough for the research. I changed out the plant for a, how is it called? Jumping Joyo, because this practically can grow at any temperatures that are livable for the dupe. And we have 27 kilograms of pressure in here. So most plants won't grow in here. We got two kilograms of barbecue that is at 90% freshness. But as long as the rocket is on the ground, it doesn't get cooled. This only gets power when there is sun outside. So at the night, the refrigerator won't get cooled. So we have to send this off into space quickly because in space there's always sun. Back to the rocket, we have the mess table and now we can assign it to Rowan and the bed also to Rowan who is ineligible. That's probably because, check the rocket, set the crew to change crew. Rowan is the pilot, change the destination, set it to any tile. Let's go for this one and let's see what happens. Rowan gets in there and begin to launch. Ah, okay. Uh, enable this building. Okay. Now it should go. 
There we go. Nice. Rowan is already in space, as you can see here. So we can take a look at the interior and deactivate the building again. There we go. Now, research time. In order to use the space underneath the work area of the steam room, I closed off the area that you can see right now with igneous rock insulation tiles and a couple of ceramic tiles around the steam geyser. Gave the dupes the order to deconstruct the granite floor as well as place down a lot of gas pumps and hook them up to our power shaft where the gas transport system will be located, i.e. all the gas pipes that transport the polluted oxygen with the slime lung and dump it into space. We also have a main power line there that we can hook up to a couple of transformers which then transport the power via small cables to our pumps. Here I've added a temporary access point for the duplicants. Nice, Rowan completed our research for new media. Now we can research for something else. Maybe rocket parts. The hydrocarbon propulsion. Sounds interesting. Also, let's check in on Rowan. Rowan is holding his breath. Well, that's stupid. Rowan, what the heck? This is so unnecessary. Okay, unequip the suit. Ah, you little... Okay. Hop that up. Oh, guys, take a look at this. Ron is stressed. 93%. I guess it's time to send him back. Back to the main planetoid, look for the rocket and land here. Now we de-stress our Ron and then we send him up again. And now he can go and de-stress a little bit. Also, I guess this was Ron's bed, so we can reassign him again. Yeah, and give him that space. Nicely done, Ron. Sleeping. And... Mm, okay. He has to do his business. Nice, he's using the new bathroom. Takes a short shower and then de-stress. Okay, very good. Let us focus our attention on Rowan for a short while so we can see his way to getting de-stressed. Uh, Rowan gets his deserved massage. By the way, we exhausted all of our eggshells. Everything has been converted to lime and has been used for the steel production. So we now have to get either fossil or more eggshell. So let's take a look at Uzista. Here we have a look at Uzista and everything that is red is fossil and can be turned into lime and then into steel. So we probably are going to dig up those tiles. Come on game, thank you. And uh, send it over with a very high priority to the other planetoid. So let's set this to fossil. Okay, I found fossil at raw minerals. Good. Now we just have to sweep it up. Okay, dupes. Is this set to sweep only or is this set to everything? Okay, then we should be fine. Sending over fossil. Nice. Back at the main planetoid, the fossil is dropping down. We should build this upwards to our storage. I'm not going to pick that up every time, that's annoying. This is very long. Maybe I just pick this up manually for now. Well then, we can go fossil to lime. Just have to find that here. Fossil to lime forever. So when we have enough fossil sent over, the duplicates will go and get it and then transfer it into lime. I'm going to set this to fossil to lime forever too. Taking a look at our base expansion, we're making slow progress. The pipes are being built and as soon as they are done, we can dump the polluted oxygen with the slime lung into space. Look what is printed. We have a slickster. I'm going to print the slickster on Osista just because. I've just noticed something fatal. We don't have any reed fibers left to repair our Atmos suits. That is why I'm upping our game on the reed fiber production. Okay, finally, dupes have finished this. So, deconstruct this again, create natural tiles. Now we can place in the pip again. And we need a door. Capture the pip and capture the grub grub. The critter drop off has to have a higher priority. And nobody's working. Come on, guys. I jumped ahead in time to a point where the duplicants finally brought over the pip, the grub grub, and the seeds. Sadly, we only have one pip. I sadly had to abandon the old reed fiber production because it was getting too hot down there. Oh man. We are short on magma again, as you can see here, if I reset this timer, the magma won't drop down. That's 
why our batteries are pretty empty at the moment. So maybe we just repower our glitch pump, dig in here and use the magma from up there to refill the magma storage up here. Maybe like this. Then I can save three spaces of magma for this one and the rest can be used. <laughs> Ruby's getting toasty. Well, of course, it's Ruby to stop standing in there, please. Now we can go up and I have to activate the pump. Where's my power? Has been built, okay. Cables still running. Why? Oh, right. I don't have energy because I don't have energy at the moment. Huh. Let's get some coal energy running so we can overcome that problem. It hopefully will only be a short term solution. Now the backup energy is running again and I closed off the magma in between so nothing happens. So now we can deconstruct the one tile and pump up the magma that we accumulated here. Let's see how this goes and then we can activate this. Okay. Nice. Now this should be big enough to drop down. That is super nice. We have a ward seed at the moment. Let's print this. While we are at it, why not expand this a little bit? Maybe we need a magma sooner or later. Oh, of course, Ruby. You take this road. Why? Why are you so uh, special? In order for our digger duplicants not turn into barbecue, I had him dig this tunnel so that they spent minimum time inside of the magma. But that still was not enough, I had to send three or four duplicants to the hospital. For now, this should help with our magma storage. Take a look at this, a free solar panel. Uh, we can add it to our array up here. Or not. Still not? Uh, no. Because our thimble reed production is still not high enough and this down here takes a while to produce some, I place down even more doors. Hopefully our single pip can handle this. We have made this room a vacuum so we can deconstruct everything that is in there right now. Let's start with the pipes. Someone is entombed. Harold. Come on Harold, just get out of there. The expansion of the base finally has been finished so we can use this room in the next episode. I am also not sure if this is a good addition, but I think of placing a glass forge right here. Hook it up to the power grid. Maybe I just use this cable because we are not gonna game. Okay, because we are not going to use that all the time. Okay, connect this up and then place down the plumbing for this. Insulation pipe made out of ceramic and just drop it near the auto sweeper. It can reach this spot so we can drop it right there. One liquid vent made out of, it doesn't matter, steel. Here, make this a higher priority and wait for the duplicants. The duplicants have finished the setup, so we can test it out by placing a couple commands for the glass forge and see how this heats up our room. That is cool at the moment. A nice 17.5 degrees. There we have Gene producing some glass and we can set the conveyor loader to glass, wherever that may be. Manufactured materials probably, yep, glass, there it is. The glass is dropping down, picked up and delivered. Let's check its way. Glass is being sent off at 600 degrees. Well, maybe it would be better to leave the glass in there for a longer time so it has more time to cool down. But, um, okay, let's deactivate glass for now. But this should cool down because it will hit the cold water. Hopefully it will not evaporate. Let's check this. Water at 45 degrees. Yep. And now we have glass at... Uh, where's the glass? 75 degrees. Okay guys, that's it for today. If you want to see the overlays, stay tuned because I'm switching through all the overlays so you can see how the base is looking at the moment. And in the next episode, I'm planning on building a couple of rockets or uh, making the research for the rockets so we can get to know other planetoids. So for now, take a look at the gas overlay, our energy, the heat. Oh, the gases. <laughs> Give me a second. The gases. 
the liquids, the solar intensity, the liquid piping and the gas piping, our decor overlay, the germ overlay, the one that no one uses, our rooms, I don't know what I pressed here, automation overlay, the conveyors and finally the radiation. Thank you all so much for watching and if you feel like it, give the video a like. Love you guys and Luma out.